Welcome to the 1969 Nobel Prize in Physics, which went to Murray Gell-Mann. I actually worked with a couple of people that, that knew him, uh, and by all accounts, he was a fantastic guy. Uh, but uh, the official wording of his prize was for his contributions and discovery concerning the classification of elementary particles and their interactions. Now, remember, he worked at a time when particle accelerators were getting bigger and bigger. The data analysis techniques were getting better and better. And see the 1968 Nobel Prize for one of those data analysis techniques, the video that I did just prior to this one. Uh, but there was a time when we thought the atom was the smallest thing possible. Then there was a time when we said, no, the proton, neutron, and the electron, those are the smallest thing possible. And then particles started appearing. Well, at this point, you know, we're still saying proton can't be divided any further. Neutron can't be divided any further. So Murray Gell-Mann was coming along doing all this, this, some theoretical work to classify particles and how they interact. Uh, and he proposed that some of these discoveries, you know, the, the things we consider to be point particles really aren't. They can be divided a little bit further. Now, remember, he was working at a time when in the 1950s and 60s, when when the uh, the electron had just been discovered in 1897, right? So we we are still not even you know what 60 plus 60 ish years separated from where we first started to dissect the atom because for centuries we thought the atom was the smallest you can get, and then we pulled it apart and realized nope, there's all this stuff in here: you got protons, neutrons, electrons. Uh, and then he started looking at it, going, well, theoretically, you know, maybe that proton and neutron could be divided out further, and uh, sure enough. Um, he he started pulling up, started pulling into the theory, and he's like, I don't think protons and neutrons are are actually point particles. I think they're made up of these other things, which he coined the term quarks. Uh, around the same time, uh, there was another scientist at CERN who was writing internal memos about the same thing. Now, there's some question on occasion: Why didn't uh, uh, the other scientist George starts with a Z? I can't remember his last name off the top of my head. Um, and uh, uh, Galman, why didn't they share that prize? Well, one was, I think part of it comes from the fact that Galman had this very broad series of contributions to particle physics. Yeah, it was probably because the quark, but um, a, a large part of other, a large part of it also was this body of work he'd done around uh, fundamental particles. And the work he'd done on the quark was actually far better than, than the other scientists had done. Uh, so I think that's probably why he was separated out and why those two weren't joined together. But uh, they, there was somebody else circling around the same problem around the same time and just hadn't gotten as far along with it. So let's dig into what a quark is, because I've heard people say it, and I'm not sure if people really truly understand uh, what these things are and where they kind of fit into the, the world of physics. So what the heck is a quark? Well, according to our current understanding of things, a quark is a type of what's known as a fundamental particle. And a fundamental particle is something you can't divide any further. And we've said that before. So can we? Can I assure you we'll never divide the quark? I can't assure you of that. Neither can anybody else who's being honest. Uh, might it be a point particle? Well, possibly, but we don't, you know, we've said that before. So anybody worth their salt, I think, should still get in and go, yeah, according to our current understanding, that's as small as you get. But, you know, one never knows. Um, now, quarks do interact with each other uh, primarily through what's called the nuclear strong force. And when the quarks come together to form a composite, they, they form this thing called... Um, a hadron and hadrons are things that the most stable hadron uh, known is is the uh, the proton and the neutron those are the two most stable versions of a hadron and now when you look at these elementary particles and they fit in the standard model as you can see on the chart um but you know there's there's protons are two up quarks and a down quark neutrons are are one up quark and two down quarks uh you know there's other types of quarks called charmed and strange i'm not sure where they came up with those names but i think they're kind of cute uh there's also a top and a bottom quark and uh they are six of the current uh what we consider to be fundamental particles and they do fit perfectly into the standard model of particle physics um but gilman like i said he didn't do just the quark he he was responsible for a lot of of kind of interesting building blocks of of modern physics uh so i think you know since they did the the Nobel Committee did address hey his general contributions especially something let's look at his other contributions outside of the quark now his list of contributions is is amazing he's he hundreds of papers over the years so I've tried to pull out a couple that were sort of top level notes things that if it was my career I would lead with some of these things right but certainly not my career mine's a lot different 
1958, in collaboration with Feynman, yeah, the guy that won the prize in 65, uh, he discovered uh, a vital structure of the nuclear weak force. In the 19, uh, also in the 1950s, he worked uh, with recently discovered cosmic rays and particles coming from outer space and, and classified something called kaons and hyperons. So he was around the, the cosmic ray stuff, too. Uh, in the 1960s, he worked with a, a mathematician named Richard Bloch. Uh, and introduced a new way to classify hadrons, which are you know what we're we're talking about with the the the, the quark. Uh, later, he worked with a particle called pions. In the '70s, while he was at CERN, uh, he worked on uh, a number of of uh, things with with various scientists. But he also worked on something called the quark color model and coined the term quantum chromodynamics, which is uh, as as a gauge theory method of of uh, looking at nuclear strong interactions. Which it's I know that's deep into the science world, and I apologize for that, but to explain all that would be a complete video by itself and i'd have to do a lot of research because chromodynamics is a weird thing to talk about unless you want me to just go deep on math in which case nobody's going to stay awake especially me so uh, i'll come up with a way to explain it uh, at some point uh, he also worked on this thing called uh, the seesaw ne theory of neutrino masses neutrinos are, are another type of, of particle that's just kind of weird and uh, a lot of them uh, are, uh, are things we're still not completely, we, we know what neutrinos are, but we, we still have a lot of neutrino theory work to do, I think, uh, in the physics world, uh, because we still aren't calculating them completely correct or we're not detecting them all one or the other. And my guess is the theory is probably off at this point, not the detectors. Um, now, the um, uh, his work is actually pivotal in sort of a building blocks of current um, uh, modern days physics and things that we do in the lab all the time because we're still working on particle physics in ways uh in fact some of it made news years ago coming out of CERN when they turned on the the the, the larger collider there and we're looking for the the um uh the god the so-called god particle the uh uh but it it, it to, to me this is still an area that's that's we're still really trying to understand and I think if we could understand particle physics well enough, and we can understand gravitation well enough, we can really understand how the universe works more. Uh, and that might lead us to technology breakthroughs that we can't possibly imagine at this point. Um, I hope everybody has enjoyed this video. We will see you on the next one. We're about to jump into the 70s where it gets a little bit even more modern than this one. Uh, and uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe, and we will see you soon.